more credit to good performances is to bring out the index of performance. And here you can see the top ten cars on this index, which is like a handicap system. It's based on past performances in each of the four different classes, and then they are given a, a bogey time, a par if you like, and the more they can exceed it, the better they'll score in their index. Now it is supposed to favour the smaller cars, but <laughs> that's not the way it's working out. As you can see there, it's the leader of the race himself. Peter Brock now with Jim Richards at the wheel, who's done best because of the index figure, purely and simply because he's gone so quickly. He's gone faster than the handicappers thought. In fourth place is a car just swept through the corner then, which was Peter Williamson's Toyota Celica and doing best of the smaller cars. Number eight going through and the uni part covers is Barry Seat. He'll have Don Smith driving with him. Barry has won this race before. He's been in the pits for a fair sort of stop and lost quite a lot of time in there when he was up in the top ten. Seems to have the car going pretty well now. And he's a man who prepares his own car, has been driving for many years, a very fast, reliable, unspectacular, but winning sort of driver. Evan, when the uh, Sebring race in the United States was initiated back in 1951 or two, whatever year it was, uh, the overall uh, first prize money was given to the index of performance winner, not to the car that finished first. And for two years, the race was an index event. And in the States, they have one. If you make your index, you're at a one. If you exceed it, you're at a one point something. And if you don't make it, you're at a point nine or point eight and so forth. And that was a very, very interesting uh, competition because of the great variety of the automobile uh, in those early days of road racing in the United States. So we're, we're familiar with that index of performance. Here, uh, is there a prize money? for the winner on index? Oh, yes. Yes, there's, uh, said he, not being sure, $3,000, I think it is, for the index of performance. There's quite a lot of money involved. We brought it in last year for the first time, along with the Rookie of the Year Award, which Unipart, the people who are sponsoring Barry Seaton's car, we've just been following, a sponsor. That's worth $2,000. So it's come in, the idea being to try and um, boost interest in the smaller capacity classes. Unhappily for that sort of theory, Peter Brock won it last year too, and he's well on the way to doing the same. He just seems to confound the handicappers and get better and better and go faster than he should. Speaking of the Rookie of the Year, Evan, uh, an old friend of mine, uh, Graham McRae, is here. In 1973 at the Indianapolis 500, that was our bad year. It rained, the race was delayed, and we had some bad accidents. So Graham was Rookie of the Year, and he's proudly wearing that blue jacket. Uh, it's a beautiful leather jacket that is given to the Rookie of the Year every year in the United States. He's wearing it around the pits, and he told me he's looking for the Rookie of the Year award here. And I said, so Graham, you know you're going to be a gray-haired rookie if you make it. He says, oh, that's, gonna, that's my life, is it? Going around looking for a place to be the rookie of the year. How is he doing in that battle right now? Do you know, Evan? Uh, no, we haven't seen the printout. We're getting the IBM printout at the moment as far as the um, index of performance is concerned. The rookie of the year is a little harder to uh, assess. Normally, we only decide at the end of the race itself rather than keep it on the IBM computer. We just wait and see what the result is. We'll check that through, though, and see how he's going. We'll soon find out how Graham McRae is, uh, is running. The classes at this stage, though, Chris, uh, in the small class, 1600cc, it's Alan Goff in the Gemini, from David Selden in the Gemini, and Jim Fanico in the Gemini, with the loss of um, Mark Hatcher in the Toyota Levin, of course, we've lost the, the car that was acting as a hare, and uh, it's the hounds that are out now, and the uh, GMH car park that Peter uh, Williamson referred to uh, has become pretty mobile and running first, second, and third in that class with Alan Goff leading. In the two-litre class, it's Peter Williamson in the Toyota Celica leading Derek Bell in the uh, Alfa Romeo Alfetta, the Brian Foley entry, and Frank Porter in the second Alfetta is running in third place. The same sort of uh, position which they've been running for most of the race. You know, yeah. I watch Williamson, of course, we all have seen his driving because his car has a, a camera in it, and uh, I'm just wondering if that has spurred him on to greater heights because he's really been doing a fantastic job on the racetrack, as you can see through his windshield. There he is now. Come on, Peter boy. And uh, for